Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to wait about another 15, 20 seconds so that more people can join our, our webinar. So just kind of hang tight with us. Let's get started. So today we're going to talk about, and you've heard us kind of talk a little bit about this several times, capability statements of government contracting. So uh, one thing I'll say right from the get-go is uh, you'll receive a copy of all the uh, of the presentation, all the slides, and then also uh, a link to the recording should you want to listen to this information again. So first a little bit about who we are. Uh, we're the Apex Accelerator. We were formerly used to be called the PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center, but uh, that has gone away. Locally, we're administered by the Monterey County Business Council. Uh, we're funded through the Department of Defense, and that's basically ever since 1985, Congress basically uh, approved this program. There are actually 96 Apex centers across the United States and in the U.S. territories, and there are seven within the state of California, and I'll show you them that map here in a second. And the mission of all the Apex Accelerators, the Apex Accelerator program, is basically to promote economic growth and employment create employment opportunities in the local markets that they serve. And we do that by facilitating your access to the government marketplace, whether it's federal, state, or at the local level. So here's this map that I, I mentioned in the state of California. So we're the, the teal area in the middle of the state here, Central Valley, uh, Central Coast. If you're in one of these other colored regions, you can either reach out to us and we can kind of refer you to our colleagues at one of the other centers. But all the centers have uh, great skilled people to help you with anything you need with government contracting. Uh, these are the services that all Apex accelerators across the country provide. First and foremost, it's just learning about your business. Do that through one-on-one -on -one counseling. Uh, learn what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and then some goals for uh, government contracting. Uh, we'll go through some pre-award assistance. I mean, because that's a goal is for you to finally get an award. Uh, teach you how to go out and find opportunities out there in the marketplace. Um, help you to understand, review those notices that you look at. They go by different names, solic solicitations, events, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and then uh, capability statements we're, we're talking about today because it's actually a real important um, tool to be used in the government marketplace. And then post-award assistance. Uh, conflicts arise, we can kind of help coach you on how to handle some things. Talk to you a little bit about debriefs, what those are, how, how you can use those to, to benefit your company, and then talk a little bit about uh, protests, uh, whether it makes sense for your business or not. Uh, outreach events are things where we hear about events that are happening that we think could benefit you. You know, we'll push those events out to you and suggest for you to attend. Uh, it's a great way for you to uh, meet decision makers, uh, meet potential customers. So they're they're important for you to to be out there networking. And what we're talking about today is a great thing to bring with you when you're at uh, outreach events. Uh, training at these outreach events, oftentimes we're providing trainings like we are today, but live in person. And then, of course, we'll continue to be doing these webinars. Uh, bid matching is a service that we provide that uh, basically what it is is we use a third-party vendor. We work with you, create a profile, upload that into their system. Their system will go out and literally search thousands of uh, government websites where contract opportunities are posted. Any matches with your profile and the opportunities that are posted then are just emailed directly to you. Uh, that search runs on a daily basis. So uh it's just a great way to save you a lot of time and oftentimes find out about opportunities from an agency that you maybe didn't even consider in doing your market uh, research and then certification programs we'll help you navigate those talk to you about whether they really make sense for your business or not uh oftentimes people think that oh yeah you know i i'm 
part of, like say, one of these socioeconomic groups. Uh, but depending on what type of business you have, uh, it might not really help you whatsoever. And so we'll, we'll help coach you on that, help you understand the supporting documentation that you'll need to submit, the qualifications, those types of things. And then um, one great thing about us, there's no fees or commitments. We're your tax dollars at work. So take full advantage of uh, our expertise. Uh, right now, I'd like to introduce to you a great strategic partner of ours, uh, Destiny Iglesias, and she's with the um, Small Business Development Center. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I'm Destiny Iglesias, and I am the Community Education Specialist at the Merced-based SBDC. We oversee the Central California region. Um, as you may have heard, Cal Coastal SBDC is currently in the process of transitioning to a new host. Um, there are around a thousand SBDC centers nationwide. Monterey and San Benito counties are part of the Central California SBDC network that provides one-on-one -on -one no free business advising um, and uh, training and access to comprehensive resources and information to help businesses start, grow, and succeed. SBDCs provide financial education, business planning guidance, and marketing tips that can help businesses get started with government contracts of all sizes. We find that many of our clients get started in government contracting as subcontractors or with contracts with cities, counties, and special districts. Our services complement Apex Accelerator services, so we recommend signing up for services from both of our organizations, especially since there's no cost to you. As Victor said, we are your tax uh, payer, your tax money at work. So if you aren't already an SBDC client, please go ahead and check out uh, the Central California SBDC website and click the green get started button because services are continuing during the transition. Um, again, thanks for joining us and I'll go ahead and pass it back to Victor so that he can proceed with the presentation. Thank you, Destiny. Yes, uh, the SBDCs are a great, great resource. And oftentimes we'll, in talking with you and learning about your business, we'll say, hey, you know, you need to work with us and them at simultaneously. Or we may say, if you're, because we get uh, contacted oftentimes by someone who's just thinking about starting a business. They don't have a business plan yet. And we'll then say, go work with the SBDC, develop a sound business plan, and then come back to us. And then we'll kind of uh, help you moving forward with that. So let's jump in today's presentation. Uh, the agenda for today is... Uh, Basically, talk first a little bit about you know what is a capability statement, its purpose, and then basically talk about three types of capability statements. There's a general one, one that's targeted at uh, federal, state, and local government agencies, and then also one that's targeted that for responding to what's called a source of sought notice. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what that is. Then I'll kind of do a deep dive in the five key elements of a capability statement. So uh, what a capability statement is, is basically a, uh, like you see here, it's a one page synopsis of your business. So it's a, uh, it's a basically a marketing piece formatted in a way that it has information on it that the government likes to see. Uh, they originally were created first for the uh, federal marketplace and a lot of prime contractors who sell to the federal government, they like to see one from uh, potential subcontractors. And now what we've seen is uh, the state uh, contracting folks uh, like these as well. And, and I'll get more into it, but it's just a great to, uh, tool to, to, to have with you. But it's a door opener to government agencies. So again, oftentimes they're gonna ask you, hey, do you have a capability statement? Uh, it's gonna detail your performance expertise, proficiencies, uh, we'll talk more about that, but it'll clearly define your business, shows that it ideally will show what sets you apart from your competition. And I'll talk uh, more detail about that as well. Uh, proof of qualification, uh, proof of past performance, kind of the same thing. And then uh, re it's required oftentimes in many government uh, registration processes. 
So the three versions of capability statements, and I'm again, uh, these are just sort of the titles of them. There's the general one, basic representation of your business, uh, agent specific response, and then the sources sought. And I'll go into each one of these. So the general capability statement. So, uh, and this is just a, a good way to start, just a general one that you'll have with you. You're not sure who you're going to meet like at a conference or an outreach event. <laughs> but it's something that, as you see kind of in this um, image on your right, is that it's a, as you're walking around on the Tate Show floor, you know, you've got your business cards, but this is something that you can leave behind with with uh, whomever you're talking to. Uh, again, and you're going to be using this at conferences, outreach ascent, uh, sessions. Uh, government agencies oftentimes military bases will have what they'll call industry days. So they'll have their people there and they want to learn about your businesses. Uh, matchmaking events, oftentimes at some of these events, they'll actually have matchmaking sessions where you can uh, sign up, get a preset appointment with a government buyer. And it's a great way to be able to hand that to, to the people that you're talking with to, so they can get a better understanding once you finished the matchmaking session to leave that behind. Um, and then association, social events. Uh, one of the things that uh, I'm always stressing to people is that, you know, you need to be out there promoting your business. You need to be networking. So oftentimes um, you should really look at, say, maybe belonging to an, organ an association of the type of business that you're in because you can learn from other people become a subcontractor, perhaps somebody who's already there, but it's um, it's a great tool to be able to, again, hand to anybody. Uh, and then uh, referral. So maybe, you know, you, you belong to an association, they give you a referral to another company that potentially could uh, do business with you. So you'd use it there. And then just virtually, uh, what we're seeing now is that uh, one thing is you want to be able to email it to it. Not, email it, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the Small Business Administration, the SBA, does now have uh, in there what's called the Dynamic Small Business Search, gives you the opportunity for you to uh, put in a link on your their pro, uh, profile that then would take you to, say, your website, so then uh, somebody could see your capability statement there. So then you can use it on a blog, LinkedIn, whatever, <laughs> but it, just making it available. And again, this is just the, the the general one that's just going to be a nice descriptor of who you are and uh, what you do. So this agency targeted capability statement, ideally, uh, if you're going to go to like an event or maybe you've gone online and you see that an agency has a specific opportunity and then in the uh, the the notice, they may ask, ask you to submit a capability statement with your proposal. Uh, what you want to do is tar then target that capability statement. You have that general one, but then what you want to do is uh, write something in it like you see here where it says laser focus on the agency's requirements with a short introductory statement mentioning the agency. So your ABC company, you might open it up where it'll say ABC company provides a service that Department of Homeland Security requires to its mission of something like that, you know. Uh, and again, uh, if the, you can see these other... Uh, potential uh, targets. So uh, you want to do business with a specific, say, uh, federal agency, you know, you're listing their name and writing something about them in this, in the narrative. And you'll see, you'll see when I show you some examples of where you would write this. Uh, same thing, again, prime contractors, oftentimes, depending on where you're at in the, in the supply chain, you would never sell directly to a, uh, say, the federal government. Uh, you would sell to a prime, you sell to another company who then would have that contract. So then you would, you know, tailor your capability statement to that prime contractor. Uh, small business representatives, uh, 
federal agencies and uh, large companies that do business or a lot of business with with uh, government actually have people on staff that are like small business representatives. They're the ones that go out and are constantly attending events and saying, hey, we want to do business with you. Tell me about your business, those types of things. Uh, <laughs> and this one here, teaming partners, you know, oftentimes we, we tell people that sometimes if you team with another company uh, together, you have, uh, you can kind of deliver a better package or you have to then increase capacity to submit a response. Whereas each one of you alone might not be able to fit that. So as you're looking for teaming partners, you want to be able to uh, provide a capability statement so that they show that you're professional and that they can quickly kind of get a sense of, of uh, your company and what you've done in the past, et cetera. <laughs> so this source is sought uh, or request for information, RFI response. Uh, what you'll see oftentimes it, in the government marketplace is that the contracting community is looking to make a determination of who's out there who might be interested in an opportunity that we have coming up. And so they'll put out a notice saying, hey, here's an opportunity. Uh, this is kind of a brief description of what it's going to be. Please send us your capability statement showing um, that you've done this kind of work before, those types of things. Uh, again, the, the narrative and the capability statement, which is basically like a elevator speech, the introductory part at the top of a capability statement. I'll show you one in a second. Uh, you want to then target that narrative to that agency that has uh, put out this source of thought notices. And again, as, as much as you can, target it to meet the contract requirements. So you may have a lot of experience doing a lot of things, but uh, looking at the source of SOTS notice, it, that's, they're going to tell you what it is that they're looking to procure in the future. And there's no need for you to put a whole bunch of stuff there that doesn't relate to that opportunity. You want it to be focused on the upcoming contract requirements. And then ideally what you want it to do is illustrate how your business differentiates itself from the competition. And I'll actually uh, do a couple slides on differentiators here in, in, a, in a bit. So again, that's just a great way for you to make your company shine. So uh, basically, uh, again, the, ca the capability statement is, it's one, one piece of paper, uh, you can use the front and the back or just the front, but uh, but basically it's one page. I've asked people, hey, do you have a capability statement? They said, yeah, and I said, well, send it to me and I'll get like six, seven pages. Uh, the contract community does, doesn't want seven pages of your stuff. Uh, if they like the capability statement and they, they like what, you're, what you have to offer, there'll be time down the road where they'll learn more and they'll wanna see something. <laughs> like a uh, seven page document. But uh, basically uh, one of the things that you wanna do is this first point is title it capability statement on the top of the document. So that when you hand it to someone, they immediately know that's just, this is what you're giving them. And then the other sections, and we'll go through these, uh, you, there's a past performance section, core company section, uh, differentiator section, and then company data. So the past performance, uh, again, ideally what you want it to do is uh, show opportunities that kind of match the, the need of the government agency that you're focusing on. Uh, again, what you want to do, like it said, the second bullet point is list your past customers with whom similar work was performed. So again, it could be that you've done a lot of different things, but uh, sometimes if you have too much stuff on it, then it's kind of like, well, this person is a jack of all trades, master of none. So if you do engage in different, uh, distinctly kind of different things, you may have, to, might, we might want to have 
one capability statement for one line of work that you do, and then another capability statement for a different line of work that you do. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, again, it's not a resume. So typically when you think of resumes, most of the ones are there chronologically uh, ordered. So that you see the most recent job. And then first, uh, what you want to do is prioritize it so that uh, if you've done work for that agency before, you want to show past performance of that project or product that you sold to that agency in the past. Uh, if it's a related agency, so if maybe you sold to the state of California, now you want to sell to the federal government, so they're related because they're they're both government. Uh, and then commercial contracts. One of the things that people uh, get confused with is just the fact that uh, you're asked for past performance and they say, well, I don't have any past performance selling to the government. It's okay to have uh, commercial contracts as past performance because you're making that transition. So uh, what, and I'll give you some examples too. If, if you're a brand new company and uh, don't have any uh, experience as a brand new company, how you can do it. So here, So here's one here. Uh, this first example is uh, you were a subcontractor to somebody else. So you can show that as your past performance, but you, you write who the customer is, in this case, Department of Homeland Security, and you write as a subcontractor to, you list who that prime contractor was, and then you say provided, you know, XYZ services, and you can see the rest of what it says. Uh, again, if past projects do not relate to the target agency's needs, don't list them. You know, you may be really proud of something that you've done in the past. It was maybe high dollar value, but if it has nothing to do with what the government agency that you're trying to do business with, uh, don't list it. Uh, this last bullet point says, give contact reference name, title, phone, and email. Uh, that's your choice of whether you want to do that or not. Uh, I typically tell people that's not something that you want to do. You want to just put the name of the company or or other federal agency that you've done work for in the past. But the reason why not putting, the, uh, say, a contact reference is that your capability statement could end up in the hands of a competitor. And now they know who your contact is their email and phone number, and you don't want to do that. You could always, uh, if if uh, if the contracting officer, as an example, wants uh, references from you, then they'll ask you for that, and then you can send that directly to them. Which, uh, and in some cases, they actually have a past performance questionnaire where you're actually required to fill out part of that, send it to your uh, reference. They fill out part of it, and then the reference is the one who submits that to the uh, contract officer. So for the capability statement, I say leave it off. So this next one, the past performance example, is if uh, you were just an employee or somebody else. You know, you worked for somebody else. You learned the, the industry. Now you've started your own business. So that's fine. So you can, as an example here, uh, as an employee of, you know, XYZ company, you provided these services and uh, shows them that basically you know how to uh, provide them the service or the product that they're, they're looking for. <laughs> so this core companies, co competency section is... Uh, one thing about, uh, I can tell you about a capability statement is when you're first meeting someone and they're looking at it, they're going to look at it like they're going to scan it and they're going to look at it for probably less than 30 seconds. So the more you, you can just kind of use bullets versus uh, writing lengthy paragraphs and stuff like that, it's the easy, it's, makes it easier for the person that you've handed it to, to kind of really quickly get a sense of your business and you know what what are your core competencies you know what do you what do you really do uh 
uh, again, if if you can, because you've done your homework, you can make those bullet points specific to the need of that opportunity or that agency. Uh, differentiators. Now, this is this is the one that can be somewhat confusing for a lot of people, and I'll cover a couple things in a couple slides here. But uh, differentiators. You know, you list unique features and or benefits of the product or services that set it apart from competing products or services. You know, what what is it that makes you better? Uh, you know, and what you want them, again, ideally, to spotlight how it benefits a targeted agency, say a prime contractor or a potential teaming partner. So, uh, so the, here, here's some examples of uh, what differentiators can be that really kind of sets you apart. So it could be location. Uh, say it's uh, say it's a it's construction project as an example, and it's up in the Sierra. Well, that project happens to be say within thirty miles of where you're at. Uh, your competition maybe needs to come from a couple hundred miles, so that becomes a differentiator for you that. You know, uh, you're close by, or it could be that you've already done work at a certain facility so that you have that experience. Maybe you've been on a military base. Uh, your your uh, employees have security clearances, those kinds of things. So those can be differentiators. Uh, your employees might have specialized training that your competition doesn't have. So that's something that's good. Uh, ex exclusiveness. It could be that uh, your company is the only company that's licensed to sell a certain product or service within, say, an entire state of California. So that is a great differentiator. Experience. So again, experience and training kind of go hand in hand, but you may have direct experience doing something that uh, your competition really doesn't have that or doesn't have uh say the years of experience that you have. Maybe they've done one or two projects recently, but you've done this for, for several, uh, say, decades. ISO, you know, that's a uh, certification in the manufacturing industry. Uh, it's a very lengthy process uh, to get it. But if you do have it, that is definitely uh, a differentiator in uh, the manufacturing industry. And then you can back it up with any kind of metrics that's always a really strong thing uh this last bullet point here it's better to have only two or three strong differentiators than put a whole bunch of lists of mediocre or poor examples uh one of the things that, that i'll just kind of add is that um when you're working on putting together a diff i mean a capability statement you know send us a draft, we'll give you some feedback on it. And if we see that you've got some poor uh, examples, we'll say, yeah, you know, maybe you should uh, remove some of these. Uh, so a little bit deeper dive in differentiators, and there's a couple more slides I have on this, but again, remain focused on the agency needs. This is kind of a common theme throughout with capability statement, but uh, the more that you can uh, customize it for a specific opportunity, specific uh, government customer agency, uh, the stronger it's going to be. Uh, think about who who really is the, is going to be the decision maker on this. Uh, oftentimes when you go to these outreach events, you'll meet basically uh, somebody who's the face of the organization, but they're not the decision maker. So you want that cap they want to basically give that person your capability statement who who then in turn is going to hand it to decision maker so that's why you want it targeted and so the de decision maker will actually be impressed with it ideally if you know that there's a upcoming contract maybe you've done your homework you there's you saw a forecast so you know that something's coming up you can you know uh include differentiators that are going to address what's going to happen in that contract. 
you know, highlight benefits that your company can provide. You can incorporate uh, metrics. And then uh, good differentiators, you know, will basically separate you as a, as a strong vendor from uh, wannabes that are out there. So kind of keep that in mind. So this slide is important. And so this kind of tells you what, what differentiators are not. So a lot of people think that uh, if you have a socioeconomic certification, that really sets you apart. So uh, if you're a veteran-owned, woman-owned, 8A, that stuff doesn't really say anything other than the fact that you've been certified. It doesn't say anything about the quality of the past work that you've done with various customers or anything like that. Those things are nice to have. You want them on your, want them on your, on your um, capability statement, but it's definitely not a differentiator. Uh, any of these kind of generic statements, this kind of one type fits all approach, uh, they're not differentiators. So using terms like, you know, we have quality people or quality service products. Everybody says they have quality. Uh, this uh, 100 or combined years of experience. Well, does that mean you have 100 employees and each one with one year experience? So be, be cautious of that. Uh, using these uh, terms like solutions provider, everybody's a solution provider, and then these uh, examples of these superlatives that people, best in class, world cast, best of breed, uh, anybody can say that about their, about their stuff and doesn't really set you apart. So uh, here, here's some way for you to kind of think about your company and come up with what might be some differentiators for your businesses. So think about this. Why did your be biggest customer want you? And, you know, sit down with your team and kind of discuss that. And they say, okay, yeah, this is what it was. And then and how, why is your company the best choice for the needs of this opportunity or agency? So, again, you want to target uh, the differentiators to the opportunity or the agency. And you know, what is it about your service or products that make you stand out from the rest? So these, uh, again, go through these uh, and really kind of take a deep dive and looking at your business. Is your business located in a place that is beneficial to this opportunity or agency? So I mentioned that earlier. And what is it about your business that gives you the advantage over your competitors? So, uh, so one part of, uh, and I'll show you some examples of capability statements here. Uh, but one, one of the things that, uh, one of the sections of a capability statement is this company data. So company data is, you know, you're putting a contact person's name on it, uh, email, uh, address on it, uh, direct phone number, uh, website, uh, at the very top of the capability statement, it says here one or two sentences. It can be a little bit longer than that, but basically it's the elevator speech at the top of the capability statement that kind of describes what it is that you do. And again, that's uh, at the top before you have the bulleted uh, core competencies in the capability statement. Uh, then what you want to do is list uh, these various codes the UEI unique entity identifier. Uh, you could, it says DUNS here, but I think now you can kind of just do away with that and just go with the, the UEI and the cage code. Uh, the cage code is really important because that what it tells someone when they look at it that you have you are re registered in SAM.gov, which then means that. Uh, the federal government can give you a contract. If you're if you're not registered in SAM.gov, it can be kind of an arduous process. And uh, in fact, I just talked to someone this this week that wasn't registered in SAM, and the opportunity the the offer is due Friday, and there just wasn't enough time for them to get registered in SAM to even submit an offer. 
<clears throat> so that's important. That's one of the first things that somebody's going to look at if it's a federal agency customer is whether you have a cage code or not. Uh, NAICS code, so North American Industrial Classification System. Uh, we can help you if you don't know what those are, uh, but you want to list the ones that you have uh, and then keep them concise. Uh, some people I've seen will have like 20 of them there and uh, really put the core uh, NICS codes that define your business. Uh, you can always, you know, once you have a conversation with someone, uh, you can then kind of say, well, yeah, we do do some of these other things too, but keep them concise. Uh, depending on if you, uh, actually, if you have a products, you know, this is a federal supply code. You can list those as well. And then, oops. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, if you have a GSA schedule, con put on, use their logo on the capability statement and then put the contract number on there. So you really want it to be kind of front and center so they know that you've got a schedule that'll make it easier for them to purchase from you. Uh, company data continued. So this is where you put the fact that, you know, you're a small business, woman owned, 8A, hub zone, those types of things. Uh, if you're in a business that requires some type of a license, like a contractor or engineering or something like that, uh, you want to put your, your license number on there. If you are in construction, uh, you want to put your bonding capacity on there because that'll tell uh, the person looking at your capability statement kind of the size of contracts that they can consider you for. Uh, with the bonding capacity, you want to put your single bonding uh, limit as well as your aggregate. Uh, number of employees, you can or cannot uh, use that. Uh, if you think it might help that because you have a significant amount of employees, you can put it on there, but you can leave it off. Uh, teams, I have this here. You could list it on there. Uh, that maybe you do have a joint venture with, say, another company. But in that uh, case, too, what you want to be able to do is your company has a capability statement, but then the joint venture has created its own capability, I mean, its own capability statement. So that way, depending on who you're talking to, what the opportunity might be, you've got uh, a couple of capability statements you can hand to somebody. So formatting, uh, you heard me mention, uh, you know, one side of one page is ideal, but uh, it, again, it's one page. <laughs> so you can use both sides. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of both a one-sided and a two-sided here in a second. Uh, again, save it as a PDF. Uh, reason why, of course, is that uh, if it's not, the file size can get pretty large and it could end up in somebody's spam folder. So uh, save it as a PDF uh, and then use, utilize the five section format we're talking about. And then uh, when you name the, your PDF, as you see here, you kind of use this format, your company name, capability statement dot PDF. So that way, uh, whoever you email it to, um, they know exactly what it is real easily. And then one thing I'll mention too is that when you do attend an event and you give somebody a capability statement, uh, tell that individual, uh, look, I've got your business card. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send you an electronic copy of my capability statement. Uh, one of the things that I've heard uh, some people say that you know, you never give a capability statement to somebody unless you had an opportunity to actually sit down with a contracting officer and learn more about their opportunity that they have. Uh, the challenge in that is sometimes you can't get an appointment with a uh, contracting officer uh, without at least providing the generic capability statement. So what you want to do is, as you've learned more about, say, specific opportunity you sell somebody look uh we've done that kind of work before we have that experience so let me go back and i will 
change some of the past performance that I've shown that'll include some of the things that uh, you'll be uh, requiring in your contract opportunity. And then you send them an updated one. So here's some common mistakes. Uh, basically not understand the difference between the three types and using the wrong one. Uh, so again, you've got the, the, the general one. Ideally, you want one that's more targeted at a specific agency. You know, you've, you've done your homework. You're going to go to an event. You know who ideally you're going to meet with. And so that you've created a couple different ones. Uh, no individual contact person information. So ideally, if you can, you know, you put an individual's name on there. So it could be. Uh, Whoever is your salesperson or maybe you as the business owner, but it helped to put uh, someone's information. Uh, too much text. Uh, again, uh, too much wordy, long paragraphs and stuff like that. That's a killer. Uh, larger than one page. Uh, so you heard me mention that I've seen some where people say, yeah, I've got this thing and it's seven pages long. And typically what happens is if it's that long, it's got a lot of really irrelevant information on it, kind of what you might call just fluff that nobody really wants to read. Um, oh, and they're not providing electronically accessible format. So again, you hand somebody the hard copy and then you say, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna email you another copy of this. That's where it makes it easy for the person that you hand it to, again, more than likely is not the decision maker but by you sending them electronic copy, a couple things. A, uh, it maintains top of mind awareness of your company with that individual. And then it makes it easier for that individual then to email it to the actual decision makers to take a look at. And then uh, this lack, lack of images, visually boring. You know, you want it to, to look decent so that uh, it's just not boring. And then no website. Uh, in today's world, you know, you need a website if you're in business. If you don't have a website, it kind of puts this image that I'm not, uh, I'm just not professional. So you got to have a website. So here's this kind of uh, example of kind of, of the layout. <laughs> Of what you might see so you can see all the company data is on the right hand side in that column uh, contact information is in the bottom right hand corner you can see that it's titled capability statements uh this one says you know put your company logo there and then the name of the company uh if the if your logo has this name in it you don't need to do both <laughs> and again uh, underneath the capability statement there is, again, just kind of a little elevator speech of what uh, your company does. But then you can see bulletized core competencies, uh, differentiators. Uh, ideally, too, the differentiators would be in uh, a bullet form. And then key clients, past performance. You can combine those, but uh, you can see on this one, it just says Chevron, AT&T, County of Santa Clara, uh, various local establishments. Uh, so you can see this is kind of a combination of private sector companies as well as government. So it's like I mentioned earlier, that that's absolutely fine. Uh, here's one that a client allowed me to share. They got a nice logo. Um, and they've got their core competencies up top. A lot of past performance differentiators being, uh, you know, 35 years as a firefighter from forest, masticated machines, uh, etc. Down at the bottom, here's the, all the contact information. <laughs> here's one here that, uh, you know, company logo there with their name of the company, it's titled Capability Statement. Here's the elevator speech of what it is that they do. Here's some photos of some projects that they've done. Uh, this is the company uh, data. You know, they're saying they're uh, 8A, there's their cage code. Uh, you know, it's got their uh, license number, those types of things. And you can see this construction at the very top bonding, because again, 
if it's construction, they really, uh, they, meaning potential customer, they want to know what your bonding capacity is. It makes codes, a little something about safety, which is really important in construction. This is a two-pager, so on the back page, they have more, uh, here's their past performance, more customers that they've done business with, you can see. So it's a combination of government. Pro These are all uh, government projects here. They've done a lot of work here. Uh, in this case, you see these two images in the bottom. These are differentiators because they're national award-winning architectural concrete uh, projects. So a uh, panel of their peers selected them over contracts all across the United States where they uh, were given these awards. So that's a great differentiator for them. <laughs> so with that, uh, this top one, key phrases, elevator speech. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, that first little three or four sentences at the top of a capability statement you want that, that basically to be your elevator speech. You know, someone's going to say, "What? Tell me about your business. What do you do?" That's what you. That's what you want up there. So kind of think about it like that. Uh, remember that your capability statement's not static. You know, updated as needed. And again, you want to ideally uh, think about these three types. You know, you've got the general uh, networking. Again, it's not static. You want to then target it to an agency, so you're going to tweak it so, so it's more targeted at that agency. Uh, and then uh, same thing with uh, response to an opportunity. Uh, typically, again, you're going to see that when it's a source of SOT notice that you're responding to, or sometimes those social SOT notices are called the uh, request for information, the RFI. Uh, save it like, as a PDF for easy distribution. And then again, you can just use it as a marketing tool for anywhere you're out networking. So local government, state opportunities, just a great way for you to, you know, create something for your company so you're not going out and hiring somebody who's a desktop publisher to create something for you and then uh, taking it to a printer. Uh, you can just do this on your own kind of color printer. Or if you want, you know, you can take it to maybe get some better printing done, like at a FedEx or something like that. <laughs> and then again, uh, oftentimes when people are first learning about capability statements is that uh, out the look and see that they've got a website and they say, oh, well, basically everything that you on your website, you can just kind of copy and paste it there and put it into your capability statement or a lot of it. So. Uh, oftentimes, if you don't have a website, by going through the exercise of creating a capability statement, then you have the content for a nice, simple uh, website. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I'll take your questions here in a second, but uh, here's some upcoming webinars that we'll be doing. Um, Valentine's Day, February 14th, uh, I'll do... Uh, presentation on proposal preparation guidelines. You know, a lot of people come to us and say, hey, uh, I need help in putting together a proposal. And this presentation kind of really walks you through how to put together a proposal. And then on the end of the month, February 28th, I'm going to talk about something that's become really important on the federal government side. It's called FOCI, Foreign Ownership, Control, and Influence, and how it uh, impacts your business and, you know, how, how it might affect you. So <laughs> those are our next ones coming up. So with that, I'll answer anybody's questions. You can just put them down in the chat or the Q&A. <laughs> As I mentioned, uh, I've got a couple of new signups uh, you'll receive a copy of these slides and then also a link uh, should you want to see this presentation again. One thing I'll, I'll add too, 
is uh, if you're working on a capability statement, uh, we've got lots of examples of good ones that we can send you. You know, I showed you a couple there, but uh, but uh, typically that's what we'll do is send you a guide that kind of talks a little bit about kind of what I just talked about. And then also, uh, again, some examples of some good capability statements. So that way it kind of gives you a sense. One thing, one thing I was just thinking about, too, is I don't know if this new, oh, whatever you want to call it, platform software, whatever, this Canva might be a great tool for you to use to put one together. Oh, let's see. Oh, somebody said uh, the chat is disabled. I didn't know that. So you can just put the questions in the Q&A. <laughs> And someone just says, thank you. So, yeah, uh, just reach out. If you're already a client of ours to your uh, counselor, and again, they can send you examples of capability statements. So they kind of give you a give you a sense of uh, what you need to put together. And again, it's not static. So, you, you know, the first one you do, especially if you're kind of a new business, uh, it may be kind of lacking in some of some areas, but at least you've got something. And then as you your business expands and grows and you get more customers, you can add more information to it. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions in the Q&A. Oh, there comes one. Yeah, somebody wants to confirm. Yes, you'll get a copy of the of the presentation. see this next one when in the startup funding subcontractor startup process would you produce a capability statement uh what one thing of what you could you could start putting one together. I think I understand what what the question is. This is you know if you're in a startup uh, phase of your business and you're seeking funding, etc., uh, or looking to be a subcontractor, would you produce a capability? And and I would. It, uh, and one of the things, of course, what you would do is more than likely is you would be using your past employment your work experience as the past performance in there so say you have special skills from uh that you've done that you can kind of list those as your core competencies and then um for your past performance again you can just put a little uh something in there about as an employee these are some of the things that you did Well, my pleasure to everybody who's saying thank you. Uh, with that, then I'll, uh, I don't see any other questions, so I'll let you go. But yeah, you'll receive the, uh, uh, Connie, I don't know <laughs> how to, you raised your hand and I don't know how to do that. If you could just type your question in the Q&A. <laughs> okay all right uh since no other questions again uh, we're here to help so uh you can reach out uh to any of our counselors and we can again send you some more information some more uh samples of the good capability statements and then uh again what we tell everybody is put together a draft send it to us and then we'll give you some feedback 
uh, on it that uh, whatever whatever it might be that hey it looks great or you know add this take this out those types of things okay well thank you very much and then well let's see do we get something else okay just more thank you okay uh Alrighty, well, we'll see you then, ideally, in two weeks, and we'll talk about proposal preparation.